Even if you're new to game development, you should already know about tile maps. They're everywhere in 2D games, especially retro-style ones like Undertale. This series of videos is for absolute beginners. I will take you from simple rendering of tile grids, to integrating physics and a camera to your levels. I'll also show you how to load levels made with the free tiled editor. Okay, let's get started. So I have here an empty project with the usual love, load, update, and draw. And I've gone ahead and I've created a map object right here. That's in a separate file called map.lua. So this is an object that has a constructor and it takes in data, which is going to be our tile data, width and height. So how many tiles per column, how many tiles per row. And then it also has here a cell size, which is the width, the pixel width and pixel height of each tile. And then we have our render function. So back here in main, I have an empty tile. So this is our tiles. It's an it's a empty table right now. And I want to populate that with some tile information. And then I'm going to pass that into our constructor here. Now, what's the width and height going to be? Well, I'm just going to make it 8 by 6. Okay. And we'll create our first row. So it's going to be 8. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Okay, that's our first row. And then we'll make our second row. So, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Because we only have 6 rows. Okay, so 8 columns, 6 rows. And you're probably thinking, you know, why am I doing this as a single table? Couldn't I do like a, a table inside of a table or something? You know, so each row is actually a separate table, and then I could use like a, a two-dimensional array, like it makes indexing and things very easy. Yes, I could do that, but it's actually harder on your CPU. So this is a little optimization that I'm doing. I'm storing everything as a single array. Yeah, just take my word for it. It's, it's a, a little faster than doing a two-dimensional array. Okay, so now that we have our data, I want some walls. So I'm just going to make these things walls, just so that we can actually see something later. So one is going to represent a wall. I'll save that. And back here in our map class, we need to render these things. I'm going to use a for loop inside of a for loop. So for, and it's going to be row equals zero self dot height do now you're probably thinking why am i starting from zero when tables in lua always start from one well this makes things easier for positioning you'll see why in a moment now we'll do our columns with do okay so we're looping through all of our rows and then we're looping through our columns and drawing each tile so what we need is to draw a rectangle for each tile. So love.graphics, rectangle, and we'll just do a line rectangle for now. And the X and the Y, and the width and height is going to be the cell size. Okay, we don't have an X and a Y yet, so I'm just going to do that right now. And that is going to be the column times self dot cell size. And the row self dot cell size. If you're wondering why I'm doing this, well, let's imagine that both of these are zero. So the tile is going to be drawn at zero, zero. Now, if the column is one, so after 0, it's going to be 64, so it's going to shift 64 to the right. And then if it's 2, it's going to be 128, and it's going to, you know, it's going to be the third one from the right. Okay, and then the same for the rows. So I'm going to save that and run it. Okay, good. 
we can see our map. So we got 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Is that correct? 0, 1, oh, I made a mistake. Sorry, I forgot that um, we're starting from 0, so we actually have to subtract that by 1. Okay, so now it should be correct. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, so that's 8. 8 columns. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Good, 6 rows. Okay, so that is correct. But, you know, like as I, I showed you before, we have walls here. So we need to draw these walls. We need to, to get our tile data. We have our tile data, but we're not actually using it right now. So for that, I'm going to do local tile equals self dot tiles. And now this is going to be a little tricky because we need to get two dimensional data from a one dimensional array. You can figure this out on your own, but let's just sort of look at the problem right now. You know, we have, uh, let's say, let's say we want to get row one here, what do we have to do? Well, if we if we count from here, it's uh, you know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and then 8. You notice how that's actually the same as our width. So if we have row 1, it's 1 times our width. And if it's 2, it's going to be 2 times our width, which is 16, and so on and so on. So we know one thing we have to do is the row times self dot self dot width but now we have to get the columns so let's just say the column is over here that's column 0 1 and 2 so it's 2 plus 8 which is going to give us 10 so we what we have to do is simply just add our column so add column. But because we're using a one based array in Lua, a one based table, so a table that starts from one, we actually have to add one to that to get the correct tile. Okay, so that should give us the correct tile information, but now we need some way of drawing that. So let's just say we you know just for a temporary solution, I'm gonna do if uh, tile equals zero, then, you know, we'll just draw it normally, like so. Um, otherwise, we can do else if tile equals one, a wall, then we can draw it a little differently. We can just, I guess we could just change this to a fill. Okay. Let's see how that looks. Good. I think those were the walls that we had, so if we look at our data... Yeah, those are our walls. If I change a couple more of these, I can... I can see the changes. Okay, very good. You know, that's nice and all, but um, maybe I want to have this part in a separate function. You know, it's, it makes life much easier if we have a separate function to get the tiles. So, because we're probably going to reuse this in a bunch of places, or maybe objects outside of our map class will want to use uh, the getTile function. So I'm going to make a, t uh, a function here called getTile. And that's just going to take in an X and a Y. And don't forget that's X starting from 0 to the width minus 1, and so on. So I'm just going to copy this. Okay. We could simply return that. I'm going to change that to X. Oh, sorry, Y. And that's going to be X. But that may not be what we want because, you know, what if the X actually is negative 1? Or what if it goes outside of our array bounds? Obviously, we're going to get some sort of error. So we need to do some error checking first. 
So if x is less than 0, or y is less than 0, or x is greater than self dot width minus 1, or y is greater than self dot height minus 1, then uh, we need to return some value, so I'm just going to say return negative 1. You know, that's just going to be like an, a way of, uh, of knowing whether or not the tile is incorrect. We might change this later, but for now, it's just a good way uh, to do things. Or we can just, you know, make that 0, just sort of the default. Otherwise, it's going to return whatever data is there. So now I'm just going to replace that. So self get tile, and it's going to be column and row. So if we save that and run it, it should work again. Okay, good. And then, you know, inversely, we also want a set tile function. So we want to set the position, and we also want to set the tile type. So we can just do basically the same thing here. We can use this. And, you know, we can return false, like we got an error. Otherwise, you know, instead of returning here, we just simply go this equals tile type, and then we can return true. Okay, let's test that out. And to test that out, I'm going to add like one more tile type. So here in our draw function, if it equals 2, then I'm going to draw it as red. So love.graphics set color uh, red, green, blue. So that is going to be red. And that is going to set it back to white. So if I save that, and here in our load function, like I can actually do it here, so I have my map set tile. And I don't know, I'll just set it, I'll set 1, 1, and I'll set that to 2, which is going to be red. Let's see how that goes. All right, great. And we can set it here in the data, too. I can make all of these red. Save that. Excellent. So everything's working fine now. And one last thing I want to do is just offset the entire map. Right now it kind of looks ugly because we just have our whole map flush against the corner like that. Yeah, I certainly don't want that. I want it to be centered in the screen. How do we do that? Well, if you look at my code, we already know the screen width and the screen height. And you know that the center of the screen is going to be half of that, or 0 0.5. You know, multiply by 0 0.5. So we have to get half of the screen width and half of the screen height. And we have to, let's say we want to center it in the X. We get half of the screen width minus half of the map's total width. Now, what is the map's total width? It's actually really simple, right? We can, uh, let's see. Well, we can set it here. We can go, so set this dot, uh, the map's, map's pixel width. Or we can call it screen width. Let's call it screen width. And that is going to be uh, this dot width multiplied by uh, cell size, and the same thing for the height. Okay, but that's not enough. We also need an offset value, so I'm just going to say this dot offset x is equal to screen width minus this dot 
screen width times 0 0.5. Oh, sorry, this should also be times 0 0.5, so half of the screen width. Okay, so it's going to go from half, and it's going to minus half of this. Now, to actually apply that, we need to add that somewhere. So over here, I've got my screen X, which is being drawn from here. So right now, that's being drawn from 0, so all I have to do is just simply add self.ox. Let's see if that works. Excellent. It's right in the center. And we can do the same thing for the Y. Okay, we'll add that here. Great. As you can see, it's now perfectly centered. And we can really move the whole map anywhere we want, right? You can imagine that this is the start of a sort of camera system where if we simply add or subtract a certain value to everything on screen, we can actually position things where we want, want it to be. This is very useful. Well, I think I'm going to end it here. Next time, we're actually going to draw some, some actual sprite images, because right now the, the map is kind of plain looking. Thank you. If you like this video, uh, please like and subscribe. Have a good day.